Welcome back, everyone. It's time, of course, for something a bit more uh, horrific, as, of course, we do like to sometimes explore the depths of horror on this stream. We've played some very terrifying games before here on Saturday nights, but this time we're playing A Mother's Inferno, which uh, is something that got a, a lot of good press when it came out. It's very um, psychological in its horror ways. I'm sure you'll all be very afraid at what A Mother's Inferno has to offer. All right. What is A Mother's Inferno about? Well, the story is very self-contained. And I'm sorry, no, The Rocket is not guest starring. It, I don't have an access to uh, The Rock's webcam tonight to put it in the corner. So I really don't have a way of doing that, unfortunately. Um, but hopefully it'll be frightening enough with just you and I here tonight. Let's start and see what the, uh, what the backstory, what the premise of A Mother's Inferno is all about. Oh no, our son has been taken away on this train. Yes, the dangers of public transportation. You never know what's going to happen when you travel. There's only one thing that we have to do, one objective of the game, and that's get our son back as we just saw. Oh, there he goes. And the environment that we see as we come out of the train car does not seem to be normal. No, not normal at all. The train car we're going into is apparently the Virgil car, whatever that might mean. There might be danger ahead, so we take a shard of glass with us. That seems wise. We meet a friend who has only one request for us, and that is to cut off his head. And in exchange for our favor, he will guide us through, well, I don't think public transportation is hell, necessarily. It comes in very useful. But things did not go- oh, things did not go well for our protagonist, who now meets someone else. Who, well, is that a friend down there? Let's see. We're looking for our son. Uh, do you know anything about that, sir? No. Shadow Chicken did not know anything about our son, or if it did, it didn't want it did not want to help us. Now that we've learned how to use our shard of glass, we have to use it against Shadow Chicken. We want to get behind it, and we can see that its neck is glowing with a dotted line. And just like with our guide, we cut its head straight off with our shard of glass. Now that we've done that, we can continue on into this train of the damned to see what might await. And he says that he will take us across the River Styx, which apparently is that, that little puddle right there. That's apparently the River Styx, and he will help us. So we don't want to cut his head off this time. Apparently, the River Styx does not damage him in any way, but I guess it would have killed us, perhaps. Who could say? Who could say what the reason is for anything that's happening on this train of the damned? And that's kind of hard to see, but I'm pretty sure that an that's not how anatomy goes. I think that's incorrect. It's a very luxurious train. 
It gets a lot wider as we enter this car. It's first class up oh, all the way. Now we meet Shadow Bull. Who is he's a he's, he's clumsy. He's he's silly. Because he, he tries to rush at us, and then we just get out of the way and he hits the wall. He's a funny guy. It would it would have been nice to meet him under less urgent circumstances. But, I mean, we do have to find our son, so we really don't have time for this. We may notice that there is a red heart on his back. So, let's get on that back and start slashing. I mean, I don't like to do it to Shadow Bull. I think we, we could get along, probably, but, I mean, we just don't have time for his, for his hijinks. Shadow Bull's a tough one, though. We do have to do this a few times. I'm sorry if this is too if this is too frightening for some of you. I should have gave an age warning that this is very scary. It's very frightening, and uh, this might not be appropriate for all viewers. This might give you nightmares. I have to admit. Oh, we did it. Shadow Bull blinks out of existence. Like he never was. Yes, if you intended to get a good night's sleep tonight, then you probably should stop watching. Because you won't get it. No, not after a mother's inferno. Only nightmares await you tonight when you go to bed. We're still going into the Virgil car, it seems. Oh, look at this car. It's very high. High ceilings. I like this train a lot. I've never ridden a train this large before. Oh, we've got another friend. What does he have to say? He wants us to descend into blindness. Because it's only through the darkness that we'll find our son. I can't argue with that logic. I'm sorry, I know that The Rock isn't here for us tonight, but we're just going to have to try to try to get through it without him. And now, we plunge into darkness. We can't even see where we're going. Ah, now light. Some, oh! Some light, oh! There's a full cathedral in this car. I don't know how they fit all this in here. or why they would have made stained glass windows of our sun. But obviously they are familiar with our sun, so that's good. Maybe they can tell us something about where he went. So in order to save our sun, we must stab ourselves in the eyes. The, the symbolism is blindingly obvious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this demon wants our eyes in the bargain, so let's do that. And again. So now that we've stabbed ourselves in the eyes, which seem like the only uh, sensible solution to all this, uh, we can now see the... well, we can't really see much of anything. But I guess now we can see the exit to the car. What terror might the next car contain? And hopefully we can find our son before the train reaches its destination. Hey pal. Where are where are we even going anyway? Who could say? And the next the next car we go into uh, is apparently a forest. Again, it's the, the latest in design of trains. The largest cars, the most comfort. You can fit an entire arboretum in one. By the way, the rest of the game is like this. 
So if you think this uh, this vision mode is annoying, this the whole thing, the whole thing is like this. Okay, and as we enter this uh, open space, we meet a new friend. It's a snail. He's not trying to harm us. We could try to stab him, but nothing actually happens because we need his help after all. On the back of his shell is a handle. I'm going to grab that handle. And now the snail will take us through the blackness, the obstacle, the... I don't know what that is, some kind of molasses wall that blocks us from advancing. And he will allow us to reach the next car. If you're curious, A Mother's Inferno was created by a group of students at the National Academy of Digital Interactive Entertainment in Denmark. If you wondered where this came from, this masterclass in psychological horror. So our snail friend has done his duty. He's helped us out reaching the next car. And where is this? I think that still says Virgil. I don't think that actually has changed. It's those fl those uh, flashbacks, very frightening, I have to say. And that, that barely legible text? It gets into my mind. The game, the game is playing me as much as I'm playing it. This friend has a lot to say about things. I am sure, once we complete the game, all he says here will make, will make so much sense and change our entire perspective of what's happened. Unfortunately, we do have to get, on, get a move on. We do have to find our son. We don't have time to listen to him go on all day about justice incited. We have flashbacks to see. Uh, and we enter the final car, in which a group of friends are watching what appears to be an arena, with this thing in it. And that's what it does. So, we have- yes, we must do battle with whatever this is. How can we hurt it? Well, if we look at its back, there is a heart on the back of it. So, like with Shadow Bull, let's climb on the back there and start slashing away. You'd think that whatever this is would have learned its lesson from Shadow Bull, because it's doing the same thing it did. It's charging at us and hitting the walls. I mean, it's kind of adorable when it does that, but... Oh, hold on. The heart on his back has turned black. I think we've killed that part of it. So, what now? Well, it does have this really red-looking lump on the front of it. Yeah, there it is. So maybe we should just start hitting that because of symbolism. Man, this is so symbolic. And so... Symbolic. You know, I like the Silent Hill series, but... Something that kind of annoyed me about that series is however since then, it seems like people think horror games have to... 
have all this symbolism of of ham-handed stuff like oh the mother has guilt about killing her son which is i guess what the game's about so here we have this thing in which we are attacking a symbolism of symbols and it's very frightening and getting under your skin because of that oh wait hold on it's not red anymore did we, did we kill it maybe uh, actually hold on there it has more red markings oh wait i think it's dead yeah there we go And now that's... Oh. Is, that, is that a duck? Was its head a duck? I think that... Well, I think that makes it a lot better, actually. Oh, it's a metaphor for communism? Oh. I misread it completely. Okay, so... Now we... Go back out into the next car. And there's our... Oh! is our son. We defeated the evil symbol and there is our son waiting for us. Let's go get him. And that's it. Credits. <laughs> when this came out, I actually saw good, like, I actually saw articles about it saying that this was actually uh, a good game and, you know, good. it really got under your skin and was effective at horror. And I'm thinking, what? This is, like, it's barely a step above evil. You remember evil, right? At least that was just made by probably one person. This was made by 17 students. I mean, I guess maybe I shouldn't, uh, shouldn't trash a student project, but it's kind of dumb. Uh, so, yes, you probably should try not to remember evil. Uh, what was the horror? Well, I mean, that's the thing. Because it is so psychological and tries to get into your mind, it, uh, it opens up discussion about what the game was really about. So we can discuss what the game was actually about. I, I'm guessing it was that she killed her son and the whole thing was a was her traversing through the feelings of grief and betrayal because I mean what else would have this been about I guess. If, or if you have any other ideas if you wanna if you wanna keep suggesting um, or maybe elaborate on those ideas about how it's all about communism I, th I would be welcoming of, uh, of those theories. Uh, it's about someone being mad at vaginas. It could also be about that. And we just go right back to the heart to the horror screen. I mean the title screen. But maybe it should be the horror screen because obviously this game's so full of horror. Maybe she had a miscarriage. Uh, I mean that could possibly be something. Maybe there. Maybe something having to do with that. It's about Obama. Okay, yes. Why didn't I think about that? It was obviously all about Obama and the false flags operations that Obama and his cadre have been instigating against this great nation to take away our rights. That is what A Mother's Inferno was about the whole time. If Obama had never been elected, then this never would have happened. Yes, Obama funded her abortion. Thanks, Obama. It's about Obama by kids in Denmark. Hey, kids in Denmark can be political. They can do that. Oh, uh, it's about guilt for not including The Rock? That could be. I do feel very guilty that The Rock was not able to sit in on this. So, I, I, that was just a little short thing that I thought we, we could do on the stream tonight. Uh, a Mother's Inferno. What was... What was this? I don't know. But if you want to play it, it's free. You can Google search it and see see it for yourself. Though I don't think there's really anything else to the game besides what we just saw here. That was pretty short, though. So, that's it for Mother's Inferno. Uh, again, gonna take a break for a few minutes. Next time, well, next time, in a few minutes, I guess that counts as next time, we're going to be doing another short little thing, though completely different from a, uh, a Mother's Inferno. 
So I'll see you in a few.